Okay, so we're going to start tonight in um, seated, and we're going to use the blanket a few times during the class. So um, if you can fold it up into this shape, it's about the width of your body, right? And um, it's folded, it's like a four, but it's folded over like uh, three times, so um, mine is. Uh, I'm going to fold it in half just to start, and... Um, and I am going to start with a seated meditation. So find a comfortable seat. And sitting up higher really helps to open the hips. So I'm bringing the, uh, my heels towards the groin. My, my, this is how I sit rather than um, crisscross, criss right? My legs. This is much more comfortable for me, more opening. Find a comfortable seat and uh, just feel yourself rooting down there. Take a nice deep breath through the nose. <sighs> Exhale through the mouth. Just feel yourself really landing here. We're gonna do a meditation, uh, it's called Nine Breaths. So uh, you can just follow along with me. So the first three breaths, you want to feel uh, yourself landing here. You want to feel rooted. So feel the sit bones rooting down. And feel the spine folding you up. On the exhales, feel your scapula, your shoulder blades softening, your hips softening. So on the inhale, we rise. The, the breath comes in, fills us, we rise, and on the exhale, we soften. On the next three breaths, start to feel the opening of the breath. Feel the belly open. Feel the rib cage open. And each breath opening you just a little bit more. It's a soft, fluid breath. And then the last three breaths, you're going to check in. Just notice uh, where in your body. Do a quick little body scan, right? As you breathe, and notice where you're holding any tightness, any tension. And then using the last three breaths, to just release tension on the exhale. If you're holding a lot of tension, it's an uh, exhale through the mouth, yeah? Open the eyes. Come on off of the blanket and then lengthen your blanket long. If you'd like some support under your back, just lengthen the blanket long. I'm gonna lay down on the blanket and I'm my, my uh, safe where my sit bones are on the blanket. We're gonna lie down on the back. So this whole, um, this whole class today I designed for um, low back. It's a low back um, as spine, uh, really gentle, um, Stretch, uh, so, sorry, strengthening, but it's really about the core today. So we're going to do some uh, specific core exercises. So bring your feet into bridge pose and then take the hands and put them on your thighs. And then your arms should be long. So I got to walk my feet in just a tiny bit more so that my palms are pressing on my thighs and my arms are long. And this is the exact distance that I want. Long arms here, soften the shoulders and they're gently pressing on the thighs. Now bring your arms down by the side, press into the floor and come into a low bridge. Now squeeze the glutes. So tap your um, glutes here, your buttocks, right? Make sure that your glutes are turned on. Don't, uh, don't look at the screen, just keep the chin tucked. Your, ne your neck is nice and long and you're gonna hold this low bridge. So keep squeezing through the glutes. The glutes are, um, are, are part of the core muscles. 
And we're gonna activate now the side glutes. So just flap the legs in and out for say like 30 seconds. We're just gonna, knees come in and out, in and out. And after you do it for a little bit, you're gonna to start to feel the side glutes turn on. So when you feel them activate, like I can feel them right now working, I'm gonna hold them in, in holding my, my thighs here in internal rotation. And now I've got the side glutes and the, and the gluteus maximus here all fired up, pressing the hands. And take three more breaths here. So it's a low bridge. It's a low bridge. And you're just working on really firing up those glutes. One more breath. And then lower down. Take the arms behind the head and interlace the hands. Elbows nice and wide. Draw the elbows towards each other. And so the, um, the arms are towards your temples. And then lift the head and shoulders. Now as you lift the head and shoulders, don't pull on the neck. Can you relax the neck? into the hands. As you do that, you are going to feel the core muscles firing up, the front body muscles holding you up here. So let the elbows come towards the ceiling, but relax the head and do all this work with the core. Draw the right knee in and then extend the right leg long. We're gonna hold that for three breaths. So reach out with the right foot. And stay up here, a cool, whole core now, whole core active. So when I talk about the core muscles, right? It's the deepest layer of muscle. If you, if you um, last breath here, and then the foot can come down and relax the head down, elbows wide. Just turn the head side to side. Make sure your neck is released. So when I talk about the core muscles, he's in the deepest layer. If you could peel all the muscles off of the body and then put them back on, it would be the first muscles we're working all of those tonight. All right, elbows come in towards your temples. With a soft, you're just lifting, you're holding the arms there, but let the head drop into the hands. Take a couple breaths here. And then lift the opposite leg and take three breaths with that leg lifted. And so now you just fired up the whole core, right? All the way down to the uh, pelvis there. Feel yourself pulling in with the pelvic floor muscles. And stay here for one more breath. And then lower the foot down. And come on back down again. Lift the knees towards you, crisscross the feet. You're gonna roll up and we'll roll over. So I'm gonna roll up and over, but I'm gonna use this for uh, supporting my knees. So turn your, I call this shape the surfboard. So turn your surfboard um, to the side. And then it can, it'll help support your knees. So come on uh, into a tabletop position. Inhale as you lift the tailbone, drop the belly, look up, and then exhale as you round through the back. So take a couple rounds of cat cow just to neutralize the spine in case the, those abdominals were uh, uh, tweaked your back, little back a little bit, and then find neutral. Extend your um, right leg behind you. And then with your hands, you're just going to sort of rock back and forth here, but I want you to really bear weight on the, the hands. So you're going to do some weight bearing here, and I want you to pull in through your belly, and I want you to feel as if the whole core is firing up here as you move back and forth, and back and forth. Good. And then come into um, a tabletop here. Lift the back leg up. Toe is pointed straight down. And then you're going to lift the, right, uh, the left arm to the sky. This is for a dog pose. This is a big postural, a big core pose. 
Once you feel stability here in this pose, you're going to move the arm and leg in and out. So we have the stability before mobility, right? So find stability. And then we move the arm and leg one more time in and out. Good. And then the hand comes down and the knee comes down. And just want to do a couple rounds of cat cow. Find a neutral back again. And then we'll do side two. So find a nice strong table, pull up through your belly. And take that, um, the opposite foot out there. I'll take the left foot out and I'm gonna rock back and forth. But as I rock back and forth, I'm gonna really feel like I'm firing up my core. So when we wait there on the hands in this way, we're actually bringing stability and strength to the shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle is um, also part of your core muscles. Those muscles go all the way up to the shoulder girdle. Next time you come to neutral, float the back left leg up, toes point down. Keep pulling up through the belly to unweight the left wrist and then lift through the right arm. Keep looking down, spine is neutral. And then begin moving in and out, right? Five times. Smooth. Inhale out. Exhale to midline. Last breath. Bring the hand down and bring the knee down. And just take a couple more rounds of cat. Notice how the back feels, make little circles. See if you can um, move very organically, right? Not sort of in one linear direction, but um, you know, moving in ways that feel good for the body. And then come on back to tabletop. All right, we're going to take the, uh, let's see, yeah. We're going to take the left foot forward, sorry, and reach the arms up. You're in a half kneel position. Draw that foot um, so that it's in, so that it's right under the knee, and then reach up with the arms. Now, find a nice stable pelvis, but I also want you to maintain neutrality in the spine, which means there's a little arch in the low back, and there's a little arch at the neck. Soften the shoulders down, the arms are reaching up. Take the left hand to the sacrum, leave it on the sacrum, press down as you come up and over. Take a nice deep breath here. And one more, breathing into the whole right side body. And then release both hands down, curl the back toe under and come up, take a nice twist, bring the arm up and over the ear. And then bring the hand back down again, drop, uh, excuse me, take the um, left foot back to meet the right and now you're in plank pose. And so again, I want you to rock forward and back. And as you hold plank, we're doing by rocking forward, you add a little bit more weight bearing and shifting on the shoulder girdle. Last one. Drop down onto the knees. Lower all the way down. Inhale, half lift. And exhale and lower down. Come back in, um, to, into tabletop and find, um, find a, a neutral spine again. Extend the left, uh, right leg behind you, excuse me, sorry, and st st step the right leg through. I'm getting all my sequences mixed up. Take the right foot back and find that 
half kneel position. Half kneel position is a great position to find alignment. So find a small arch in the low back and one behind the neck. Lift the arms high. And then you're going to take the right hand to the sacrum and you're holding that sacrum in place as, and you're pressing it down as you come up and over into this big psoas opening. It's a big psoas opening um, and the QL muscle there on the, on the left. So take a, take a breath into that space and then let the hands come and frame the foot. Curl the back toes under and take a nice twisted lunge here. Arm comes up over the head and really um, lift the rib cage here. So when you come into these twists, don't let the hips sink down. Use the core to really lift you up here. Open the rib cage and breathe into the rib cage. Take the hand back down onto the floor, step the foot back into plank, and we're gonna wave back and forth with the breath. In plank, uh, in yoga, the, the uh, tailbone's just a little bit higher. Keep the belly engaged. Three more. Last one, and that completes all of the core work. Come down onto the knees. Sink back. Inhale, come forward. And sink back. So you're in like a child's pose, but you're only going like three quarters of the way back. Can you move the tailbone? Can you wag your tail? Make sure you have some movement here. And then come on into tabletop. Okay, if you've had a hip replacement, you don't want to do this, but <laughs> if you haven't, I'm going to have you take, let's start with the left leg. Take the right leg to the center and cross the left leg, left knee behind the right knee. The feet can open up a little bit. The hands are right under the shoulder and you're going to do cat cow here. So exhale as you round and then inhale as you lift. And round the back. And then lift the tailbone and the heart opens. Let's do four more of these. This is a really nice way to open the back. And uh, for people with back pain, this is a really nice way to uh, get a little bit more uh, movement of the spine. Last one. Nice. All right. Take that. Uh, you can uncross that leg. And then you're going to just extend it long on the mat, right? So come right into this pose here. So here we go. We're going to use a block so we're not going so far. And then we come right into gay pose. So these are the six movements of the spine, right? So we always start with these. This is two. So I designed this class because I got an email from somebody telling me that their back was always bothering them after yoga. And, and when I talked to her about it, uh, I really, I realized that uh, it's really, it sounds more like her core is so weak. And what happens is when your core is very weak, the, um, the muscles of the back, uh, the superficial muscles take over. And uh, she was always getting little spasms. Bring the hand down to the block and then bring the arm up and over the ear. Take three circles backwards. One and two. So this is a very gentle class. We're doing a lot of range of motion of the spine. Take the block, move it back, move it back. And then you're gonna sweep the arm up and find the back bend. Press the hips forward, Ardha Mandala. Yeah. 
nice deep breath. And then release. And walk the hands forward and bring the knee in. And let's just end by lifting that left arm up and then sweeping it under. So we're just, we're doing the six movements of the side. We just did the whole left side. We're gonna do the same sequence on the right. Do two more of these twists. This is the fourth time I'm teaching this class this week and I can tell you it really does work every bit of your core because <laughs> every bit of mine is sore. And then take your, put your hands uh, down. Or we'll um, come on to the other side. All right, so this time we're going to take the uh, right leg over the left, the opposite. I'm sorry, you know what? Uh, let's see, left hand comes to the center, left knee comes to the center. Yeah, that's right, right hand, right, right over left, right over left. Inhale, lift, exhale, round. Lift, exhale round. Lift, round. And one more time, lift and round through the back. Uncross the leg and then extend, we'll extend the other way. So take the block to the left this time and come into a standing kneel. Inhale as you reach the arms up, find a nice neutral spine. Exhale into gate pose. And inhale and exhale into this side angle. So if you want to just move with the obliques, right, then don't tap, tap down, right? Just let your body, the strength of, the, of your core move you in and out. Got a full house tonight, so I'm sorry about the noise. If you can hear it, they forgot I was teaching. I think. Up and back. And next time you find extended angle pose, we'll stay there, right? So stay. Yeah, and then we'll take three circles backwards. One and two and three. And then we're gonna find that back bend. So the arm comes down, move the block back, right? So that uh, it's now behind the shoulders, sweep the arm forward, press into the block, press the hips forward, release the head. Last breath. And then bring the hands forward. You can take that, uh, that right knee in, and then let's just do four of this, the dynamic twist, right? So reach and then tap the shoulder down. And reach and tap. And three. And four. All right, come into tabletop. Take your blanket, you can push it off to the side. The next time we use it, we're gonna roll it up for a supported pigeon pose, but for now, just leave it off to the side. Come into tabletop. Walk the hands one hand length forward. Curl the toes under and find a bent knee down dog. So bend the knees, release the hips. See if you have any movement right now in the hips. Can you, can you sort of wag your tail back and forth? Inhale, come forward into plank and then using the core muscles, pull yourself back into down dog. With bent knees, inhale forward, back into down dog. And inhale forward, and back into down dog. Walk your hands to your feet, hands to feet. When you get to your feet, 
bend the knees, and these are her forward folds we're going to take today because we're really protecting the spine. So um, straight leg forward folds uh, often are not a good thing for most people. So keep the knees bent. Let the torso rest on the thighs. Bring your hands to your hips. Bend into the knees and come to stand. Inhale as you reach the arms up over the head. And we're going to do like a chair and then sweep the hand and twist. Right? So we're going to do a few of these. We'll reach the arms up, sit into chair, twist. Reach. Twist. Reach. Notice as you twist, as you twist to the right, the left knee comes forward slightly. Yeah, that's a good thing. Releasing the low back, twist. All right, this is a really nice functional twist here. And last one, twist. Lift up, forward fold with soft knees. Walk your hands back into down dog. Inhale forward into plank, lower knees, chest, chin, or all the way down in one. Take your fingertips to the side, elbows to the sky, press into the tops of the feet. Inhale as you lift, exhale to lower. We're doing three of these, so two more. Lift into cobra, exhale, lower. And last one, lift and lower. Bring the elbows right underneath you. Find a sphinx pose. Press into the tops of your feet until your kneecaps lift from the floor. Engage the glutes slightly. You're in a back bend, so engage your glutes. It'll lift the pelvis. Press into the forearms and drag the forearms towards the heart. Take a couple breaths here. You'll feel the breath in the belly. Take one more breath and then bring the hands under the shoulders <clears throat> and come back into tabletop, curl the toes under and find downward facing dog. Lengthen the heels, see if you can start lengthening the legs a little bit without losing that nice uh, neutrality in the spine. And then walk the hands to the feet one more time. You get here, bend into the knees, sweep the arms up. And this time we hold chair pose. So sit and hold chair pose. Reach through the arms. Bring the weight back to the heels. Bring the weight to the heels. And hold nice strong chair here. Can you lift one foot up? And then bring the foot down. Hold that chair pose. Can you unweight the other foot? And lower down. Exhale and forward fold. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, fold one more time. Reach the arms up. Find chair. And now this is a, a, a that this requires a lot of core. Take the hands in front of you. Press and reach. Sit into chair with those arms, reaching forward. This is called bear pose. Firing up the whole core and then release. Walk the hands back. Down dog, inhale forward plank. Knees, chest, chin, lower as you can. Come right to sphinx, right? We ended in sphinx last time. We're going to start right here in Sphinx. Find Sphinx pose, press into the toes till the knees lift and lift the heart. Drag the forearms towards you. Tap, tap, tap with one foot. And tap, tap, tap with the other. One more time on each side. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. tap. Bring both feet in. And can you catch your feet for bow pose? Kick the feet into the hands and lift. Three breaths here. Breathe right into the belly. The inhale is going to lift you up. 
And exhale, to soften. Two more breaths. Last breath. Lower down. Release. Hands under the shoulders. Knees together. And walk yourself back into a really gentle child's pose. Let your, let your whole torso drape over your thighs. If this doesn't feel great, sometimes it feels good when you add a little bit of space. Yeah, that actually feels really nice. Now I get this supported forward fold. Back is curving gently forward to sort of counteract that big extension of bow pose. Release the head. And then come on back into tabletop. Walk the hands forward, roll the back toes under, and press into downward facing dog. Lift the right leg high into the air. Do a nice knee to nose crunch. We'll do a couple of them. And then on number three, we're gonna step it through. So this is number two. And number three, round through the back, really lift, lift, lift. Step forward, root down through the back left foot. Hands on blocks are nice here for like a little supported lunge. And then root to rise. Here's your warrior. On the exhale, let the fingertips almost touch the earth. And find it smooth here. We're gonna do this four more times. Exhale, do fold forward. Inhale, we'll lift you up. Two more times, exhale to fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. And inhale to lift. Take the hands to the heart, step the foot forward. Reach the arms behind you or float them out to the side. Lift the back leg, lift from the glutes. Squeeze those glutes, lift the back leg. Warrior three pose. Take one more breath, hands to the hips, step way back and straighten the front leg. Step the back foot in, all 10 toes will face forward. We're gonna take a version of pyramid pose. So I have all 10 toes face forward, feet are hip width distance apart. This is it where we use our blocks or block. If you have one block, use it on the left side. Right foot's in front. Block, spring the foot, and I forward fold. And now I'm going to take those blocks. I want to just walk them forward. As you walk the blocks forward, press into the blocks like you're dragging them back, and then lengthen the heart forward. Right hip comes back. Left hip is forward. And take one more breath here and then bend into the knee and come to stand. Reach the arms high, hands come to frame the foot and step back into downward facing dog. And take a few breaths here. Left foot lifts into the air. Three crunches, the third one steps forward. That's one. Two. And this is the one that comes forward. We're down through the right foot. Root to rise. Warrior. Five. Uh, forward fold. Says one. Move with the breath. Find a really smooth breath. Yeah. Smooth breath. Smooth movements. Inhales lift. Exhales you fold. Three. Times four, last one, five. Arms reach up, straighten the leg, hands to the hips, come on the back toe, float the arms to the side or behind you, float the back leg up. 
Hold for three breaths. Lift from the glute, not from the low back. Bend into the standing leg. It's gonna help you lift the leg higher. Two and one, hands to the hips. Step back, straighten the legs. Look at your feet, all 10 toes forward. Reach the arms up and bring the hands to the block. If you have one block, the block's on the right. Take the left peace fingers, put them in that left hip, pull the hip back. Lengthen the heart forward. If you have two blocks, it's, it's easier to walk the blocks forward, press into the blocks and feel more of a lengthening of the spine. So this is our uh, forward fold here with straight legs, which I said I don't love very much, right? But that's why we have nice blocks to support us. Take one more breath. And then step that uh, right foot to meet the left. Inhale as both arms reach up. And then the hands come to the heart. So in most classes, uh, I would follow this up with revolved triangle. We're gonna break down revolved triangle. We just did the pyramid piece of it. And now we're gonna do the twist. So bring your feet wider than your mat. I'm gonna face you actually so you can See me doing this. Your feet are nice and wide. The block is right in the center. So what I don't like about this pose is that you're in this forward fold with straight legs and then you do this deep twist. So we're, we're breaking it down. This is the deep twist part of it. Bring the hand to the block, both hands to the block. Press your right hand into the block, all 10 toes facing forward. And then take that left elbow to the sky. If it feels okay and it's pointing to the ceiling, you can reach the hand up. Spin the palm so that you're looking at the palm, right? So we're deconstructing revolved triangle pose here. So we just did the pyramid piece of it. This is the deep twist. Feel that twist all the way up the spine. And when one leg is not forward, you can really, uh, it's a much gentler pose, but very effective. Take one more breath and then bring the hands down. Place the left hand down and then sweep the right arm to the sky. Elbow points to the ceiling, release the arm up. Spin your palm so that you're looking at the inside of the arm and your palm, yeah? It's a big external rotation. One arm, see how my arms are in one long line. Take a few more breaths in this really nice twist. And then release that, bring the hand down. If you're not facing the long side of your mat like I am, why don't you do that now? Bend into the knees and come to stand. Take your block with you. We'll put the block behind the left ankle. Take your hands to your hips and shift both toes to the left. Bend into the knee and then sweep the arms up into this warrior pose. So this is side warrior. Your gaze is over your left fingertips and you have to think about a neutral spine here, right? So not overarching because we want to, uh, our core muscles work best when we support them with this neutral spine. You have a tiny little um, um, uh, curve in the low back. Lift the arms and hold, lift your palms up. Reach the arms up over the head without moving the hips. Can you move in and out of warrior with the breath? Inhale, lift the arms up. Create more space for the breath. Exhale, lower down. Try not to bring your shoulders way up either. So keep the shoulders dropped as you lift. And then exhale, come back to side warrior. Reverse, straighten the front leg, straighten that left leg. And then bring the hand right down to the block. Left hand, right hand's on the hip. I'm gonna bring that hip forward slightly. Press the hand into the block. Then we'll take 
triangle pose here. Let's do three circles back. One and two. And this is really just to open the shoulder in three. And keep that hand behind you. Oh, beautiful. Take the arm up and over the ear. Find your strong triangle. You can put a tiny bend in the leg. Lift the bottom arm if you wish. Tiny bend in that knee. Right? Last breath. And then the hand comes down. Take the hand. Take the block. You're going to put it under the right hand. Walk the left foot over to the left a little bit. Then we'll do a supported lunge. So you see this is right here. This is a supported lunge. All 10 toes are facing uh, the, the long side of the short side of the mat. And just hold right here. This is a prescriptive pose for arthritis. On the next uh, exhale, you're going to straighten the leg and hold. And then on the inhale, you're going to sink into the right hip, opening the psoas. Exhale, fold. And inhale, open. So some people, um, the psoas actually intermingles there with all of the core muscles. It's a very deep hip flexor forward. And it's also the first responder to stress in the body. Uh, activates the fight and flight response so that if we're in danger, we can quickly get out of the way because your psoas is the first to be activated. Last time, open the psoas and then forward fold. Take the hands to the front, long side of the mat. Place the block in the center. Hands come to the block. Release the head down. Move the block forward. Move the hips back. Lift the toes and come into this version of downward facing dog. Release the head. Bend into both knees. Walk the block forward towards you and come to stand. Take the block to the back of the right foot. Hands to the hips and shift toes to the right. Bend into the right knee. Find your side warrior. Bring your arms to the horizon. And the most important thing is you're not lunging and you're not overarching. Yeah, so draw the tailbone in and pull down, pull the belly in, stabilize your core. So stability, right, before mobility, before you move the limbs. So let's keep the pelvis stable as we move the arms in and out of side warrior with the breath. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Two more. Last one. Left arm down, right arm up, straighten the leg. A deep breath, then bring the hands to the hips. Take the hand right down to the uh, block and take that left hand and keep it on the hip for a moment as you just sort of pull the hip forward. So it's, the hip bone is sort of facing down, yeah? And just take a breath here. This is the base of your triangle pose and you should be able to stay here and you're super comfortable here. If you're not, get another block or build yourself up. And you see how my shoulder, my, my right shoulder is above my hip, right? That's um, either, so there's no constriction in the right side body. Spin the heart open, take the hand to the shoulder, release the hand to the sky. Bring it over the head, and we're going to do three circles backwards. And that just, we're just opening the shoulder, right? One, two, three. Keep the hand behind you. And then bring the arm up over the head. Reach. Bring a soft bend into the knee. Can you release the hand and use the strength of the low back to hold you? Right? If not, you just bring the hand right back there 
and you find this version of triangle. Please. Close the triangle. Take the block, move it to the left side. Hand goes on the block, walk the right foot off to the right. So your feet are now hip with distance apart and you're on railroad tracks, right? Not a balance beam. Find that lunge, right? Find your, I'm gonna use two blocks because I have them. And this makes this so easy with two blocks, right? I can find a really nice supported lunge and then I can move in and out of it. So lengthen, then bow to the right leg. And then inhale forward and open the psoas. And you can move in and out of this. Here's a modification. You can drop down onto the knee and take this uh, anjanasana and have split pose, right? So both do the same thing. So see if you feel better uh, in this variation or up a little higher. One is not better than the other, okay? Uh, whatever helps you feel more supported. Last one. And then you're going to bring the blocks out to the side, step that foot back, come on down onto your knees for just a moment. Curl the back toes under, and then just sit on the heels just for a minute. Take your uh, hand and pull your pinky toes forward if they got caught like mine did, yeah. Just pull them forward and stretch the back of the feet. So we're about to do uh, a pose where we're gonna really need open feet. So stretching the back of the feet out. Inhale, arms reach. We're gonna just open the shoulders here, right? Now take your mind off of your feet for a minute, hands to the heart. Inhale to open, exhale to close. And release the hands, press and reach. Full range of motion of the shoulders here. Exhale, release, hands come behind you. Inhale, open the shoulders. Exhale, forward fold, lift the arms. Release the hands. Last time, ready? Sun breath. Hands to the heart. Raven's breath opens and then close, interlace. You're gonna press and reach. On the inhale, it's a press and reach. Release on the exhale. Hands come behind you, open the heart. And then exhale, forward fold. And release the toes. That feels good, yeah? Come back to tabletop. Come into down dog and walk your feet to the top of the mat. And bend into the knees and stand. All right, you can take the wall for this pose. So I'll do this next to the wall. I'll do that uh, first next to the wall. And uh, the, the wall is gonna be the standing leg. So we'll, we'll have the, um, the uh, right leg be, we'll start on the right leg. I'll use my wall. And then for the second one, I won't use the wall, but oh, I'm sorry, we, uh, we don't need the block. <laughs> All right, so stand next to the wall. Here's my standing leg. And open your feet, right? So we're doing a balance pose on one foot. So we just opened our feet and we got our shoulders warmed up. So here goes. Lift the left leg high. Take your hand down the leg. Grab your ankle, point your knee straight down. Lift the right arm to the sky. Find a neutral spine. Draw the belly in and the tailbone down. Soften the standing leg. And then as if your palm is pressed on a table, reach your hand across that table. And you're in Natsurandrasana, dancer pose. Kick the foot into the hand and let it lift you up in this little back bend. The wall is right here if I need it. Hold for three and two, and now bend more into the standing leg, come back to stand, draw the knee in towards the chest, give it a little tug, and then you can lower it down. Just shake everything out. Okay, same pose, we'll do it on the other side, I'll do it from the side, just so you can see what it looks like. Root down into the left foot, take the right knee up, slide the hand down to the ankle, 
and point the knees straight down. Lift the left arm up, soften the standing leg. Bring the arm down as if it's on a table and then start reaching across the table. And you can go this far, yeah? You don't have to go so deep. If you want to take it deeper, you reach, 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 and then you start kicking that foot into the hand. As the foot kicks into the hand, the hip lifts. Hold for three, and two, and one. Bend into the standing leg, come back to stand, draw the knee into the chest, give it a little tug, I'm losing my balance, <laughs> and lower down, and then just shake those legs. All right, take your blanket. I'm gonna just roll mine. So it was in that surfboard shape, I'm gonna roll it. And then I'm gonna place it right in the center of my mat. To just check the time. Okay, we're good. All right, so the uh, roll is in the center, supported pigeon pose, okay? Have a block or two in front. Take a tabletop position right over the blanket. So the blanket's right in between there. Roll the toes under and find down dog. I'll start with the uh, left leg. Draw the left knee towards the wrist. My left heel is sort of resting on the blanket. I'm dropping my right knee down and then I use my right knee. I do like this knee toe, knee toe until I soften onto the blanket and I'm up higher. So my role, if you need more support, right? You know, you grab another support for yourself. See that? Just happened to have one right here, my neck roll. But you grab another support. So the higher you support yourself, right? Your body will relax. If you're up this high, you definitely need blocks because you can't come all the way down and rest, right? So grab a few blocks or grab something, another pillow. If you're up really supported, then your arms have to be supported as well. This is a yin pose and the hallmark of yin poses is um, time. So we give them time. We use our breath, we use props to totally support us in the, in the pose, in the posture, and then you use the breath to soften into it. So use your breath to just soften into it. It's really nice to support the forehead. So, you know, after a few breaths, if you want to try to just sort of rest the forehead on the block, go a little deeper, that might feel good to you. Lengthen your exhale. If this pose is too much for you, the modification is on your back and I will just demo that, right? You just lay down on your back and that left leg is out to the side. You cross it over the right knee and then you just pull the right leg in. So it's same pose, same pose, but no weight bearing. So this could feel a lot better for some of you, yeah? Okay, so to get out of this pose, and because we're switching sides, uh, I like to just sort of curl the back toe under and press up, and then take that leg out and bring it back, okay? And we'll just do the same thing on the other side. So um, bring the right knee in towards the right wrist, and then lower the leg down. Drop the left knee down, and then slowly lower yourself onto 
the blanket. And then see if you can rest the forearms either on blocks or on the floor. And optimally, right, we want to be able to rest the forehead too. So the, the, the hip is supported, the pelvis is supported, right? You're not in this deep extension of this, of this leg because, um, because you're supported, you're up higher. So the back leg isn't, uh, it, it's not such a deep pose, but very effective. So use your breath to soften into pigeon, resting pigeon. And to come out of it, you're just going to press up, stay on the floor though, and just swing the back leg around. Yeah, swing it around. And then I'm going to move this, um, the roll out of the way. I'm going to take my block, lie down on the back. And this is actually a really nice um, pose, Viparina Karani, that completely relaxes the it actually relaxes the core because it relaxes the psoas. It puts the psoas in a completely uh, relaxed hammock position. So come into a supported bridge, place the block right under the sacrum. I'm gonna hang on to the block. My fingertips are sort of at the back edge of the block and then I bring my knees in and I bring my feet up. And I have to move my block up a tiny bit. So then you're gonna adjust your block. So that it forms like this little shelf for your pelvis and that your feet uh, are up, but you, this, this is effortless. This, this, this um, posture should be effortless. And your psoas, that, that fight or flight, that first responder there is in like a hammocked position. So it's completely relaxed. And your body is getting signals to relax because your feet are above your heart. Your heart is above the head. And you're in an inversion. So this is an inversion. Whenever the body's in an inversion, the blood pressure lowers. <clears throat> And the heart rate can lower and slow. Feel the breath just moving in the belly. Relax the jaw and the shoulders, soften. Your feet might start to feel tingly or cool. So you're just noticing. And then draw the knees into the chest and you can lower them down again. Take this uh, block away. Feet nice and wide. You can just take any movements that feel good in your body right now. I'm just going to windshield wiper my legs side to side. Do any movement that feels good. We're going to go into Shavasana. So you want a nice, uh, you know, you sort of want to, whatever your body feels like it needs, you do it. You you've got some props, right? You have a you have a blanket roll, so feel free to take that thing, right, and then bring it across the mat again, and bring it all the way up to your 
your bottom. L open the legs into a V, open them wide, drape them over, and then it's going to lift the low back. Now, I always need a little neck support. I have this whole neck support here. So take whatever you need. <clears throat> my daily practice, I do these 15 minute shavasanas. So I get my, I make myself really comfortable. It's a really nice practice for the winter rest. Yeah. Couple deep breaths to land. So I, I I take a few deep breaths and I I sort of exhale through the mouth <clears throat> and I really I feel I feel like I need to do that because I've just been through this sort of active practice right and um, and now I want my body to relax. So make yourself as comfortable as you can, right? If you can make yourself 5% more comfortable, do it. Notice how the back body just sort of spreads onto the earth below you. Heavy, right? If you, if there's a sense of heaviness in the back body. The effect of gravity on the back body. And just feel supported by the earth. Yeah, the earth is holding you up, always supporting you. Feel supported enough to let go. And start exploring any physical sensations in the body. So do a little body scan, just noticing where you might feel something, yeah? You might feel some tension. <clears throat> and these sensations will come and go, yeah? So just watch them, watch, become the witness. Notice the breath without changing it. Notice if you can feel any expansion with the breath. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe it's so shallow. That nourishing, healing breath. Releasing all control of the breath, just simply be its witness. Each breath looks a little different, just observe. And then stay, staying with the breath, even when the mind wanders, bring it back to the breath. Start to uh, bring a little movement to the body now. So wrists, you can move the wrists and ankles. We're gonna take three conscious breaths here to sort of bring more energy into the body, right? So the breath carries energy, healing energy. So take one first deep breath, feel supported, feel your body on the ground. And then on the exhale, just sort of giving gratitude for the support in your life. If it's just the earth, there's always something supporting you, yeah? Second breath, breathing in, feel the, the, the healing energy of the breath. 
feel the expansion of the breath. And then on the exhale, just giving gratitude for the breath, for uh, that life force. And then on the third inhale, just feeling yourself, your body, our bodies, right? Our collective, in this collective experience, our breaths. And then on the exhale, just feeling this sense of connectedness with each other, gratitude for each other. Draw the knees to the chest, roll over to one side, press yourself back to seated. Find a comfortable seat. And then bringing these healing hands of gratitude to the heart, just giving a bow to yourself, to this practice, to the healing power of yoga. Take a nice inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And thank you guys for coming tonight, sharing this practice and trusting me with your practice. Have a great week, everybody. Namaste.